Thomas Swick has been on the show. He's a journalist. He's been on before, but he's written a fascinating piece that commanded his appearance today on the show. Thomas, welcome back. Hello, Rudy. Good to talk to you again. He's written a terrific piece in the Missouri Review for the winter 2011 issue, which I presume extends into still winter, uh, even in Missouri, called My Days with the Anti-Mafia. And it's a first-person account of going to the island of Sicily. That's the island way down off the boot of, uh, of Italy, right at the tip. Um, I, I've always called it uh, the, the, the island or the town, in the case of Palermo, the main town there, the town that uh, time forgot. And I think Thomas found the same thing there. But he went there to find out about a movement that is standing up to the mafia and saying, you know what, we're not going to pay protection money, store owners, business people, uh, 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 et cetera. It's called the Adio Pizza. Pizzo. Adio Pizzo. I guess that means against uh, corruption or against payoffs. Is that right, Thomas? Well, no, it, it actually means goodbye to protection money. Uh, oh, okay. Adio, you know, in Italian is goodbye, farewell. Oh, of course. Adio. And pizzo is the word for protection money. And what happened in, in 2004, there were a couple guys who just graduated from the university in Palermo, and they got the idea they'd open a bar. And somebody said to them, well, you know, if you open a bar, you're going to have to pay protection money. And the reality of doing business uh, was brought home to them. And instead of opening the bar, they printed up stickers that said, an entire people that pays the pizza is a people without dignity. And they went around late at night when nobody could see them and just covered the city with these stickers. And the next morning, the people of Palermo woke up, walked out to work, and, and read these, these, this message. And it made quite an impression because it really kind of uh, caught on to something that everybody had been thinking. And, and finally, somebody was, was doing something about it. And from there, they just started recruiting uh, members, businesses that, would agree not to pay protection money when the mafia came calling. Now, I know it's a minority of businesses, you say, but it's close to 500 members. Is that is my recollection? It's even larger now. Since I wrote the story, I was just in touch with um, Eduardo, the, the guy who uh, basically heads up the travel arm of Adio Pizzo, because what's interesting, they started out as this very grassroots organization of, of businesses and things, but now they conduct tours, and it's become a very popular way to visit Palermo and, and Sicily itself. Um, but the, the number number right now is up to almost 700 members in Greater Palermo and over 700 throughout Sicily. So it, it so, continues to the, grow. These are anti-mafia tours. What do you do on an anti-mafia tour as a visitor? Okay. Well, I, you can do, you know, the nice thing about them is that they're very flexible. So if you contact Adio Pizzo, you can basically design your tour. and you, Or you can take, they have everything from a one-day tour to, to ten-day tours. Uh, they have a wonderful-sounding ten-day tour, which includes culture, gastronomy, and anti-mafia activities. So it, it's just, a, I think, a great um, assortment of things. But I did a, a day tour with them, and the first stop was was very moving. It was the memorial to uh, Paolo Borsellino, who was one of the anti-mafia magistrates who was killed in 1992. He's coming from his mother's apartment, and uh, his car was blown up, and he and a few bodyguards were killed. And now in that spot, there's a, an olive tree that was planted, and it's still to this day, this is 20 years later. In fact, this, this year is going to be a big year because it marks the anniversary of his death and his colleague, uh, Giovanni Falcone. But there's a, the olive tree is there, and there, there are mementos and messages and caps and things that people leave in homage. And, uh, it, it's, it's, and it's off the tourist trail, you know. You, it's not the kind of place you'd find on your own. So, so if you take a Adio Pizza tour, you'll, they'll take you there. They, you also go to places that refuse to, pl to pay protection money. Uh, one of the more interesting is a store in downtown Palermo that sells nothing but products made by pizza-free enterprises. So everything you buy there, olive oil, um, caps, um, they even have pizza-free Internet <laughs> use. Um, but they'll, I noticed they'll, that in your piece. <laughs> yeah. So they, they show you around, and, and, they, you know, if, and people who don't like tours, you know, they exist as well, can still have a kind of um, anti-mafia experience in Sicily because through Adio Pizzo, 
you can find out the bed and breakfast that belong. Uh, there are a couple hotels, but mostly bed and breakfast. Uh, what restaurants to eat in, what stores to shop at. And they also, Adio Pizza now has these evenings of uh, aperitifs. So they gather in, in a pizza-free establishment and have wine or, or cheese made by pizza-free enterprises. So there are many ways you can, you can experience this, uh, this movement. My guest is journalist Thomas Swick. He lives in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. He's got a fascinating piece in the Missouri Review, the winter issue, called My Days with the Anti-Mafia. Well, Thomas, you started uh, the answer to my last question about visiting the sites where um, anti-mafia crusaders or fighters were, were killed. And that, of course, is the Godfather-style stereotype of the mafia. I mean, is this, is this a dangerous profession being against the mafia there? Is it dangerous to go there as a tourist and uh, making a point of only going to places that don't, that don't pay protection money, et cetera? No, I don't think so. As a tourist, I don't think it is. Um, you know, I, I wonder about Eduardo and some of his colleagues because they're, um, what they're doing is, I think, uh, very brave. And, and I asked him about it, and he said, you know, his parents worry about him. He's a young man, and uh, he said his parents worry about him and tell him to be prudent. But, um, you know, they they have a map that they'll, they give out to people with the uh, lists and, and uh, identification of uh, pizza-free uh, establishments, and they even have their, their headquarters on the map. So there's nothing really secretive about them. They're, they're really out in the open. Uh, and, you, and you suggested that these days uh, the mafia is not s sort of just killing somebody who irritates them doesn't seem to be their M.O., though that could change at any moment. Yeah, you never know what's going to happen. But lately they've been fairly quiet. And uh, I was going to say, Eduardo, when he conducts these tours, wears a T-shirt with a anti anti-mafia message, an anti-pizza message. So, um, uh, you know, they're they're just going about their business and and um, hoping that eventually the the mentality will change. And most people think it will take time, but it seems like it's it's starting. Just uh, to the listener who might have just turned, tuned in, um, Thomas Swick is talking about anti-pizza with an A, not anti-pizza. Uh, right. Pizza is pay off for protection money. And he went to Sicily, to the island of Sicily, and uh, um, uh, looked into this movement, this anti-pizza movement uh, that, that has sprung up there. There is a near, nearby town of Corleone, a, known, a name we certainly know from the Godfather uh, uh, fictional uh, movies, uh, movies and, and novel, where they actually celebrate the mafia, don't they, They're for tourists? They do, and there are mafia tours, you know, because a lot of people come, especially I think Americans, where the whole image of the mafia has been romanticized. But as a counter to that, Adio Pizza does its own anti-mafia tours in Corleone, so that's definitely worth worth uh, looking into. Let me, uh, I want to give the uh, email, uh, the website for for the organization because uh, people Please. who are interested can get in touch. It's Adio Pizza Travel. IT and that's A D D I O P I Z Z O travel all one word dot I T and there you'll see click you'll see a little flag a British flag click on that and you'll get the English version and you know, Palermo and all of Sicily as I say the, ta the the place that time forgot litter buildings crumbling I haven't been there in probably six years did uh, you still found that didn't you according to your article. I did. It's wonderfully atmospheric, you know. Yes, it, it is. It really <laughs> is. And, and, you know, there are a couple places in, in the heart of Palermo where there's still damage from World War II, you know, bombing damage that has not yet been fixed up. And, and it's just an amazing thing to see as a tourist. But, but it's a very lush place, you know, the vegetation, the, the palm trees, the ficuses, um, and it's it, incredible atmosphere. I, I, really, I really love Palermo. Unfortunately, I didn't get outside Palermo, right? so I have to go back and see the rest of the island. It is a fabulous island. You can read more of Thomas Swick's articles at his, his website, thomaswick.com, S-W-I-C-K. His article is My Days with the Anti-Mafia. It's in the Missouri Review, winter issue. Thomas, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Rudy.